best NBA player from each height. The shortest player. At 5'7", we have Marquise Noel. And his basketball skills are Noel. His field goal percentage is zero. The only points he's ever scored are free throws. Embarrassing. 5'8", Jacob Gilliard. I'm gonna be honest, four points, three assists per game, not that impressive, but he shoots 41% from three. You know how hard that is when you're tiny? You have to shoot the ball so high. 5'9", Isaiah Thomas. For the first time in his career, he's not the shortest player. Congratulations, Isaiah. But in general, yeah, he stinks. 5'10", nobody. 5'11", Jordan McLaughlin. Another below average point guard who has terrible stats, who makes me think, how is he even in the NBA? Six feet. Finally, some good players. We have Chris Paul, one of the best defenders defensive point guards in the league. A 12-time All-Star. But he's not the same right now. He's only scoring nine points a game. I mean, his defense is still good. He gets seven assists. But he's not the same Chris Paul. So we're gonna go with Fred Van Fleet. This guy is an offensive beast. 17 and a half points a game? At six feet tall, that is insanely impressive. Eight assists per game. That's even more than Chris Paul. He is easily the best six footer. 6-1. We have Trey Young. 26 points, 11 assists. We already know Trey Ice Cold Young is a superstar. Think about it. He's the shortest guy to score over 20 points a game. And he's scoring way more than that. And he had competition because Darius Garland, the all-star point guard for the Cavaliers, is also 6'1". He's great, but Trey Young is just on another level. 6 Two, one of the best heights in the league. Jalen Brunson, John Moran, Kyrie Irving, and the best one is... Ja, ja, Steph Curry. You didn't see that coming. Steph Curry is better than all of these guys. 27 points, 5 rebounds, which is crazy for Steph Curry. 5 assists. We already know he's one of the best scorers of all time. Not even right now, but of all time. But Greg, his stats are kind of close to the other guys. What makes Steph Curry on another level is his clutch. He literally just won the most clutch player of the year award. So even if all the stats are really close, how clutch he is, is what makes him the best at 6'2". 6'3", CJ McCollum is terrible. He's not even top five at this height. Get him off my screen. This is interesting because De'Aaron Fox is 6'3", and he is no joke. 27 points, five rebounds, six assists, and he was second place to Steph Curry last year for the most clutch player. So he's really clutch. And I almost gave it to Fox. But no, there's one player who is a little bit better and it is Donovan Mitchell. Same exact points, same rebounds, same assists, same field goal percentage, same three-point percentage. It is crazy how their stats are exactly the same. So how do you know who's better? You have to watch the games. And De'Aaron Fox is amazing. But Donovan Mitchell, when you watch the Cavaliers, he just takes over. When they're losing by 10, he'll score 12 straight points and take the lead for his team. He had a 71-point game. Donovan Mitchell is just able to dominate the game a little bit more than De'Aaron Fox. 6 Four. We have Anthony Edwards with 26 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, but forget all the stats. When I watch Anthony Edwards, I can tell he is going to be one of the best players in the league. He might become one of the best shooting guards ever. I mean, not now, but in the future. But I'm sorry. Right now, there is one player who overall is a better player, and that is Derek White. Derek White is the best defender 
on the Celtics. When Derek White joined the Celtics, that's when they made the jump from a top three team to being the best team in the league. Even in the Olympics, Team USA had so many superstars to pick and they chose Derek White over those guys because they know what I know. This guy makes your team win. So I love Anthony Edwards. He's going to eventually be better than Derek White. But today, Derek White is the best at 6'4". 6'5". We have James Harden at this height and I just want to show him respect. That's it. You are great, Harden. But for the first time in a long time, you are not the best at this height. Only 16 points a game. I love him, but he's getting old and not playing as well. And he's especially not the best when we have Tyrese Halliburton. Probably the best passer in the league. 11 assists per game? Nobody does that. And on top of that, he's scoring 20 points a game. His field goal percentage is 48%, which is mind-blowing for a point guard. He is so efficient. And he's another player that Team USA wanted on their Olympic team over so many other superstars. Just for fun, here's a picture of James Harden without a beard. Oh, wow. 6'6". Six, six. Devin Booker or Jalen Brown. Devin Booker scores more points, gets double the assists, shoots a higher three-point percentage, a higher free throw percentage. He's definitely better than Jalen Brown. Devin Booker, believe it or not, is not the best at this height. Jalen Brown is third place, Devin Booker is second place, but the best player at 6'6 is Shea Gilgis Alexander. This guy almost won MVP last year. 30 points a game, you heard me right, 30 points. Six rebounds, six assists, but he's also one of the best defenders in the NBA, which is so rare from somebody that scores this many points. This is why Shea Gilgis Alexander was second place in the MVP race last year. I love Booker, I love Jalen, they are amazing players, but Shea Gilgis is literally on another level. 6-7, Kawhi Leonard, you lose. You are second place because the best 6'7 player, well, I don't know if you've heard of him, aka Luka Magic, 34 points? What is this, Will Chamberlain in the 1950s when he just scored however many points he wanted? That's what Luka's doing. He's had multiple 70 point games. And on top of that, nine rebounds, 10 assists per game. He is by far the best player at 6'7. Six, 6'8. Eight. We have Jason Tatum, who wasn't amazing in the playoffs, but he's still one of the best players in the league. I mean, 27 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. He's more athletic than people realize. I mean, if you look at some of his dunks, he's very athletic. And really what makes this obvious is his only competition is Paul George. And Paul George is a better defender, I'll give him that. But the points, rebounds, assists, the clutchness, I'm taking Jason Tatum over Paul George every single day. 6'9". Okay, LeBron is 6'9", but at this age, he's no longer the best. The best 6'9 player is Bam Adebayo. If you look at his stats, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, relax. Don't type that angry comment. LeBron James is obviously the best 6'9 player. 6'10". It's between Anthony Davis, a center, and Paulo Banchero, a small forward. Paulo Banchero is one of the best in the league from the mid-range. He hits all of those shots. He is the leader of the Orlando Magic. He made them a playoff team. And on offense, I would rather have Paolo Banchero on my team. But obviously, we're looking at offense and defense. And that's why Paolo Banchero is second place. Anthony Davis is top five on defense in the league. Maybe even top three. 25 points, 13 rebounds, two and a half blocks per game. And this is another one where if you just kind of watch the games, it's pretty obvious. Because when Anthony Davis is on the floor, everything changes on defense. Nobody wants to go in the paint because even if he doesn't block them, he's going to mess up their shot. It's going to be a very difficult shot. And the best part, he just had the 
healthiest season of his career. It's the first time he's played 76 games out of the 81. If he stays healthy, he's gonna go crazy this year. 611. Oh my goodness. It is between Giannis, Kevin Durant, and Nikola Jokic. The toughest decision of the video. When you look at scoring, it's Giannis, 30 points a game. Durant and Jokic, they both score 27. So, so far, Giannis is winning. Rebounds and assists? Yeah, Kevin Durant, get out of there. You are third place. So now that we are between Giannis and Jokic, Jokic's stats are a little bit better. Jokic has more rebounds, way more assists, but Giannis is the better defender. This was almost a tie, but there's one thing that breaks the tie and makes Jokic the better player, and it is his ability to hit Threes. With a 36% three-point percentage, defenses have to guard Jokic all over the court. Because of that, that makes him so dangerous on offense. Giannis, who is amazing, is not able to hit threes. So defenses can play like this. And that's why Jokic keeps winning MVP. Because he can do everything while being a center, a big man. It is so impressive. He is the best at this height. Seven foot, Joel Embiid. You thought we had the most points with Luka? Nope. Joel Embiid averages 35 points a game, 11 rebounds, 6 assists. He shoots 40% from three as a seven footer. And he's amazing on defense. I get so excited about Joel Embiid. He just keeps getting injured. But he has no competition at seven foot. It's not even worth mentioning the other names, honestly. Seven one. It is between Chet Holmgren and Rudy Gobert. Such an interesting matchup. I know what you're thinking. Rudy's better on defense. Chet is better on offense. No. Nope. Well, you're right about the offense. Chet scores more points, is able to hit threes, gets more assists, and on defense, while Rudy Gobert gets 2.1 blocks per game, Chet Holmgren gets 2.8 blocks per game. And the crazy part is, Rudy plays 35 minutes a game, Chet only plays 29 minutes. So in six less minutes a game, he still gets way more blocks. Even though he was a rookie, Chet Chet Holmgren is the best player at 7-1. 7-2, Chris Stops Perzingis. A huge reason the Celtics won a championship. 20.7 rebounds, but once again, a big man who can hit threes. 38% from three. We talked about how when you're really short, you have to shoot so high. When you're 7-3, you don't know if you should shoot high or shoot low. It's really difficult, but he figured it out and he's an elite scorer. And also there's not really any competition anyways. 7-3! Bowl, bowl! Bro, this dude stinks. 5 points, 3 rebounds. How many blocks does he have being 7-3? He gets 0.6 blocks a game. Come on, bowl, bowl. You are lucky there's no other 7-3 player. Literally anyone else would have been better than you. And 7-4, who else but the alien, Victor Wembanyama. But what about the best NBA player from each height of all time. I've got to see that. 